Hi everybody, Mike here with you on the Sonex 413 YouTube channel. And today we're talking about supercapacitor free flight planes and maybe how to get started in flying them. Now, what are they? Well, they're real simple free flight models like these here that are electrically powered and instead of batteries we use uh, an item called a supercapacitor to power them. Super cap, ultra cap, boost cap, gold cap, a lot of different names, but this is basically what they are. And you may see that and go, oh yeah, I, I just threw away a video board that's got about half a dozen of those on it. And boy, they sure look like the same item, but they're not. On that board is uh, a bunch of standard electrolytic capacitors and the difference is apparent when we look at the markings on them. The ones on this circuit board that I'm throwing out, these are all measured in units of microfarads which are millionths of a farad. So those are very small fractional part of one farad and these are actually 10 farads each. So in terms of actual energy storage, the supercapacitors are holding some tens to over a hundred times the energy of these old-fashioned electrolytic capacitors. So, unfortunately, those are not going to fly, as they say. Well, we've got a, quite an assortment here of supercapacitor free flight models. These are all made out of foam. Most of them are three millimeter foam from the hobby store, but you could use foam picnic plates, takeout meal foam trays, a lot of different materials, and then color them up with a magic marker for a paint job, a Sharpie magic marker. And even the wheels on these are made out of foam meat tray material. And they're all powered by little uh, DC electric motors called coreless motors and in this case we're using motors in various sizes 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter, 6, 7 and 8 millimeter diameter motors. Let's go through them real quickly. This is a little prop drive unit that I handmade. It's got two 4 millimeter motors geared to that central shaft this one has a single 5 millimeter motor geared to that propeller shaft. And then you can see a 6 millimeter motor with a short case, a 6 millimeter motor with a 15 millimeter case, and a 7 millimeter motor with a, I believe it's a 20 millimeter case. They'll all work, and depending on the size of the propeller you use, best thing to do is set it up on a little test rig like I have here run it up see what it produces for thrust and duration and then figure out what kind of model you can put it in basically you want something that really glides well because these are not super high powered um, these are the actual supercapacitors themselves and um, these as I said before are 10 farad rating um, these are the ones that we found very inexpensively from a Chinese supplier, but you could Google supercapacitor and you can find them in all sizes. All these smaller planes are all powered by these same size 10 farad caps. And the one larger plane back there is powered by a 40 farad capacitor. So that's a, totally in a different size uh, class, I guess you'd say. This, that one's got a 40 farad capacitor and twin 8 millimeter by 20 millimeter direct drive motors. And that does a couple minutes on a full charge. Now, um, here's the typical installation set up on our high tech test stand. And what it consists of is a motor, basically, uh, and, and a capacitor, which we can think of as a battery. We're basically using it as a battery that's capable of charging and discharging quite rapidly. Um, we, we hook those two items directly together, install a small switch in, in one of those legs so we can 
start and stop the motor as we desire and um, those switches are super small and they're light and they're very inexpensive and the reason we use those is so that we can charge the thing up and walk out to the middle of the field and wait for just that right moment to throw the switch and launch it. It makes it a lot more convenient. Uh, some people just charge it and let the motor run while you're charging it. The problem with that is you'll never really get a full charge and it's hard to, to gauge how much you're putting in it. Of course the amount of charge you put in determines the flight time basically. These capacitors are rated at 2.7 volts. They will charge up to 2.7. You can push them a little higher. In our experience we sometimes push them up to about 2.8 volts. According to the technical literature I think we're probably detracting from the ultimate life cycle of these things which is normally about a million cycles. I don't know how much we're damaging them but they do respond to the higher charge by giving us a little better flight and they're inexpensive enough, I guess we'll consider it an experiment and see uh, how long they last under the conditions. Now the other item in this circuit you can see here is a little, um, let's see if it'll focus, it's a little charging port that I made up and it's just two pieces of wire and it's soldered right to the red and black wires that go to the battery or I should say the capacitor. And our charging uh, adapter looks like this. This is homemade with a couple pieces of paper clip wire. You can see it reflecting there. That's the negative pole and then on the bottom here is the positive terminal and we can just put that right into this port like this and as it makes contact we're charging the capacitor up. Now what do you use to charge the capacitor? Well, uh, you, if you're just getting started, two AA alkaline batteries are the best bet because they're easy to get a hold of and uh, they work. Don't use anything with a higher amp um, output such as a, a, a larger cell or possibly a different type of battery like a, uh, a, a couple of NICADs or something like that. The reason is these supercapacitors have such a low internal resistance that when you initially hook them up to a charge they act just like a short circuit. They'll take everything the battery source has and if there's too much available um, they, they will charge or discharge in excess of their ratings and actually do damage. So, uh, two AA alkaline cells in series is a little over three volts and that'll charge this up perfectly for you. You can, When you get started you can just time the charge five seconds or ten seconds or fifteen usually that'd be enough to put a full charge in it. Um, the way to meter the charge is to uh, put in, in parallel with your charger leads here hook a voltmeter up to that and then you can watch the voltage in the capacitor rise as you charge it. You can disconnect it just at the right time and you'll know how much of a charge you have put into that thing. Uh, after you get sick of buying alkaline batteries you, you're going to want to make something like this what Richie and I made. This is an adjustable regulated DC DC converter with a voltmeter on the output. So with this we can instead of buying disposable double A's we can use a big light lipo pack and recharge it when we get done. This is enough to fly three or four d days of flying. So we've got the output of it set up to 3.13 volts somewhere between 3.1 3.2 that'll simulate two alkaline batteries and then the output to this little clip thing here. Let's go ahead and hook it up Okay, we're, we're hooked up and now we see our voltage starting to rise. 1.4 volts, 1.5 and if we look at our amp output here we see 0.8485 amp that's 840, 850 milliamps 
and the little unit here is regulating that current so we don't overcharge it's keeping it to that limit now the amp load is dropping means we're approaching full charge and the voltage here is up to the rated voltage and we're pushing it a little bit don't get rated voltage is 2.7 and we're up to 2.79 so we're over the rated voltage 2.8 that's about all you can do and the charger the little blue light came on showing us it's done so we'll disconnect that and so now this capacitor is charged with 2.8 volts let's switch it on and watch it run we'll just move that little slide switch and there it goes And you can hear that motor slowing down immediately when it starts running it's it's slowing down in a linear fashion that's a characteristic of the capacitors the voltage constantly and smoothly drops unlike a standard battery that holds up to a pretty high level and then drops suddenly at the end so they're different in that respect incidentally the rated charge and discharge rates on a supercapacitor are the same number so they're capable of charging just as quickly as they discharge that's what makes them convenient at the field you can you can do a 20 or 30 second charge and fly for a minute or two minutes with it it's a lot like flying rubber power but without all the winding again that motor just slowing down in a very linear fashion um, so the effect is with a, with a capacitor model you get a pretty vigorous climb and then it slowly backs off goes into a cruise phase and then as it winds down it takes quite a while to uh, come to a complete stop and so it gives you a little bit of sustaining thrust and really extends the flight time quite a bit So that's the power system. As I said, probably the best thing to do is set up your proposed motor system on a setup like this, test run it on the bench, see how much thrust it produces and for how long, and then decide what you want to put it in for an airplane. Okay, that's about it. Hopefully you got some use out of this information. Uh, any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'd really appreciate having you like the uh, video and subscribe to our channel. Happy landings, everybody. Bye now.